From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I'm your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on Talk Stream Live and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free for you at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced out radio show our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to bumblefoot and reading up on captain shirk's sor newswire tonight's show is brought to you by chive charities help make the world 10 percent happier by visiting chive charities today you can find them on our website Tonight on our monthly feature, Science Bob and Friends, we are heading deep into the Uinta Basin to learn about Skinwalker Ranch. Lifetime scientist Bob McGuire joins us to bring a scientific and unique perspective to the paranormal world through the educational lenses of his community. Tonight, Science Bob and I will bring in probably one of the biggest names we've ever had appear on this show. He's a businessman first, family man as well, and the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, Mr. Brandon Fugel. Now, Mr. Fugel bought the infamous ranch in 2016 off of billionaire Robert Bigelow. It's only been within the last number of months that Mr. Fugel has come out publicly to discuss what is going on with the legendary history of the ranch. UFOs, skinwalkers, paranormal activity, it is all on board for tonight. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Science Bob, we kick things off with you another great edition of this show tonight my friend oh i'm very excited uh dave to be here and brandon thank you so very much for accepting our invitation to come and have a conversation with us well it's it's a privilege to be with you gentlemen and uh and great to uh to address these topics to a global audience and i look forward to hopefully answering any questions that you and others have as we uh we continue our journey okay. and our investigative series out at Skinwalker Ranch. That's beautiful. So, of course, there's a tremendous amount of curiosity about who is Brandon Fugel. So, uh, if you don't mind, tell us what you're comfortable uh, telling us about the history of your life, <laughs> how, how, you, how you got to be a, a commercial real estate person, and then what experiences did you have in life that brought you to an interest in Skinwalker Ranch? Because I'm sure there are audience and others who are, are, are tremendously curious. Well, no, th- thank you so much. A little bit of my background. Uh, I, I born and raised in Utah in a small town, Pleasant Grove. Uh, where I've lived the majority of my life, other than a couple of years uh, where I lived in Hawaii. Uh, I launched my career in commercial real estate at the age of 18, uh, literally one week out of high school, uh, with a focus on selling uh, office properties and mixed-use commercial developments up and down the Wasatch Front. Uh, Early in my career, I, uh, I built a proprietary database tracking not only all of the inventory in the market and all of the buildings, but also the companies and the, the key players and influencers behind those companies in order to really develop uh, a crystal ball look into the future of what was going to happen in our market and you know the growth of, of really the crossroads of the West, which is quickly becoming the crossroads of the world. So... For, for the majority of my life, I've really focused on more conventional pursuits, um, you know, primarily and initially in commercial real estate, uh, where I launched Cobalt Banker Commercials, Utah, and Intermountain Operations, which I grew to, you know, 30 offices nationwide, over 650 people in 11 states, uh, and, and most recently merged with global giant Colliers International, which is one of the big three global commercial real estate firms where I uh, currently serve as the chairman of really the Intermountain operation. Uh, In addition to those activities, uh, I have also launched and uh, been involved with a number of technology ventures, you know, ranging uh, everywhere from, you know, software development to, to also scientific instrumentation. 
and have had a lot of fun as an entrepreneur uh, being involved at every stage of development uh, from inception to liquidity events and and really expanding uh, my base uh, within the business community and, and being able to work with an extraordinary group of people, entrepreneurs, and leaders that uh, that I think are really changing our world. Um, you know, it's it's been an interesting ride, and this it, this new chapter uh, involving Skinwalker Ranch is uh, has been a little bit of a twist. I think most people, especially in my market in my business community, have been surprised to learn of both my interest and also my uh, my investment and dedication to to really exploring some of these uh, more uh, unconventional. Uh, topics, which which uh, we're we're coming together to speak on tonight. So I I come to you and the listeners uh, as an open book uh, with transparency and uh, in the spirit of collaboration. Look forward to sharing with you some of not only our key insights but also the uh, the steps along the way uh, in this journey, which uh, yeah, I think is just getting started. I think we're just barely scratching the surface of you know understanding what is at play at skinwalker ranch and also really the nature of our universe and the world around us so oh, it's, it's good to be with you that's kind of a quick primer into my background so uh i'm the oldest of four boys uh i i count my father as my greatest mentor and example uh and i've also been surrounded by some incredible partners and uh you know, individuals who've really helped influence me along my path. I, I've been very fortunate to have great partners and clients uh, that have trusted me with their business and with, uh, with the opportunity to represent them. And I, I, you know, I, I never intended to reveal my identity as the owner of the most scientifically studied paranormal hotspot on the planet. And it's, it, you know, coming, coming out and going public with, uh, with this, this involvement in this project is, is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm, I'm trying to, trying to get used to it and trying to be equal to the task, uh, before me, but, uh, pretty, I, I think, you know, being a child of the eighties grew up, uh, in a Spielberg esque type of environment, you know, raised on a steady diet of star Wars and, Close Encounters and Raiders of the Lost Ark and, you know, all of those things that, uh, that, you know, inspired youth back in those days. In fact, it's, it's funny. There's a series on television called Stranger, Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're probably familiar with it. And I, I joke with people often that I, I feel like they, they literally just copy and pasted my childhood uh, because I, I was that exact same age, that uh, that time frame, and that uh, that whole series so far has really captured kind of the spirit of uh, some of my youth, as far as you know, growing up in in small town Pleasant Grove, and and uh, in an in an interesting period of time in our our uh, country's history, and and also I, you know, having good friends and confidants along the way. Uh, I was an Eagle Scout. I uh, had uh, had a lot of involvement in the scouting program growing up. Was involved with student politics in high school. Had my own radio show. So this is this is kind of fun to join with you gentlemen tonight on uh, on this show and in this this medium. I, my show was the KPGR Cult, which was a, an FM radio station that the uh, the high school um, had. And it was, uh, it was, you know, my first real experience with radio and media that it was a lot of fun at the time. But, uh, and then, if, you know, as I, as I launched my career in commercial real estate and, you know, my entrepreneurial pursuits, you know, I, I ended up, you know, I think maturing and, and having, you know, having some exciting experiences in the business community, you know, the, The first developer who took a chance on me that was actually breaking ground on a six-story Class A office building and a a large mixed-use master plan project was a gentleman named Jim Morse. 
Uh, and if you've watched the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch series, you'll see Jim Morse. You know, he's uh, introduced as the ranch manager, um, wears kind of a cowboy hat most of the time and in you know, kind of a, a Native American vest. But uh, Jim was, was really my first big client and the first developer that took a, a risk on me. Uh, when I was just barely 18 years of age, uh, as he was breaking ground on his building, and I had the uh, the honor of representing that project and going out into the business community and and marketing that building, and it was out of that experience that uh, we built a relationship that has spanned decades. And I think what you'll find regarding Skinwalker Ranch is that we've treated our investigation. And our work out there, um, you know, with with a degree of, I think, uh, seriousness, and also uh, we've treated our our team as a ranch family. Uh, Jim is someone who has had an influence in my life uh, from 18 years of age, and you know, several of the others that are involved with the series and with the investigative um, research that we're doing have uh, have been with me. For many, many years and, and probably could have never imagined either being on television or being roped into something of this nature. So it's 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 quite an adventure uh, and an experience for all of us. But uh, I ended up taking a, a two year break from ages 19 to 21 and served a, a mission, a religious mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's where I lived in Hawaii for a couple of years. And uh had an incredible experience there, uh, just getting to know the people of the islands and loving them and you know, the incredible culture uh, that they have. And then coming back and, and literally the day after getting back from my mission, jumping right back into the world of commercial real estate and business head first. And I've never really looked back. Um, and so that's a little bit of a, a quick primer on my background. Feel free to ask me anything you wish. And uh, again, it's an honor to be with you on on this show and to to hopefully address what we are doing at Skinwalker Ranch and you know the path forward. Okay, let me poke past the veil just a little bit and take you down a place. Uh, I noticed very early on in the series that uh, you're a faith based family, and uh, just just as a introduction to me. Uh, I, my father was a minister, uh, and I noticed that your family's faith-based when your brother uh, asked Travis Taylor, could he say a prayer before they took a flight? So uh, naturally, it's a, a bit of curiosity to me, and I'm sure to others, uh, given, given your faith-based background, can you comment on how your faith has influenced your path through this study? You bet. That's a very good question, a very valid question. And you're right. You know, the the uh, what was captured in the first episode of the series was was very um, raw and vulnerable and authentic. Um, in fact, my brother Cameron, who is the pilot and runs the aviation interests of the family, and has been my private pilot for my business endeavors, um, you know, for the last 15 years is very spiritual. And as we have uh, been involved with the ranch, we have grown to understand that we're dealing with phenomena and forces that are unknown, that are both malevolent and benevolent, we believe. And we believe that in approaching the ranch, both both physically and figuratively, it, it really does require um, reverence and humility and we we offer prayer and uh and and before entering the airspace or even driving into the property we encourage all those who enter in their own way to prepare themselves and armor them sp- themselves spiritually for what what you know they may encounter on the property uh is i i was raised latter day saint as a christian and I, you know, as for my faith, you know, was raised to believe that we are not alone in the universe, that there is a higher power, a heavenly father that loves us. There is a plan for us and that this mortal existence 
is just a brief moment in time relative to our eternal progression and that there is more than meets the eye to our reality. And I found that, you know, our, our experience at Skinwalker Ranch is, is not in conflict with my faith um, or the faith of others. In fact, if anything, it's faith affirming. Uh, I think, you know, what we are witnessing and recording the data that we are collecting really, I think, uh, gives credibility to, I think, the fact that we aren't alone in the universe and that, uh, that, that there is a, uh, a greater plan here and that there are no coincidences. Uh, but I, I, so I, a little bit of a long answer to your question. I, I, I find that, that this research and these efforts are, are uh, not in conflict with my faith. And I've found that, you know, in, in being involved with this effort, we've, I've found that my own faith, uh, although complex, has been strengthened because, uh, you know, I, it's funny, anyone who believes in, a, in an afterlife, and I think most people who live on this planet um, believe that there is life after death, that there is some higher power, you know, however they characterize it. I mean, every, every culture and every, every religious creed defines that differently. But I think, you know, one thing that we see in common among people is that there, there is a belief that, that there is, you know, more to this life than, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And, you know, one of the greatest challenges um, in life and with faith is, is that, you know, it's difficult to prove any of this scientifically to prove that there is, you know, life beyond this mortal existence. Um, and, uh, I guess the, the, the interesting thing that I've come to realize is if, if you believe that your consciousness or your spirit or your soul, however you define it, carries on beyond this mortal existence, you believe in a multidimensional universe, in my opinion, um, because it, the spirit world or the next realm is just simply another dimension of reality. I believe that sits alongside ours and it's arguably just right. as tangible, just as real. And, you know, the, the challenge is, you know, proving that, or at least, you know, living by faith, and uh and and putting your your faith and hope in that and and i think you know what we're witnessing um to a degree with the ranch is is evidence that there is more than meets the eye to our existence that that there are other dimensions of reality that are interacting with ours um you know i think there there are a number of things happening and that we're recording that really attest to the fact that that we're we're definitely not alone now whether that means that we're being visited by people from other worlds, I don't know. But I think without question, we're definitely seeing evidence of you know, multidimensional uh, interaction taking place and you know, things that, that really transcend our more, I think, conventional view of reality. Brandon, Fugel is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio on Science Bob and Friends. Brandon, we've got about four minutes before we have to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Why do this? Why buy Skinwalker Ranch? You're a successful businessman. You are somebody who is very involved in your own faith. You're a family man, first and foremost. You have everything you need in life, and you've taken on this incredible challenge of Skinwalker Ranch. Why do this? Good question, um, because I've, I've had my hands full with just uh, the obligations uh, with, with the various projects and the clients that I serve. Um, I, I consider this the greatest science project of our time. Uh, I don't think that there is a more um, compelling opportunity to delve into the nature of our world in the universe than that which we are encountering at Skinwalker Ranch. To have a 512-acre piece of property that has been serving as a living laboratory that has been really under constant surveillance 
for 24 years and has been part of a Pentagon black budget program for a period of time during during you know the last decade i think is is not only you know something that 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 sets this apart and makes it unique but i think um i think presents an incredible opportunity under the right stewardship and the way i have approached this is really as a steward as someone who is really given the responsibility of of taking the research forward and and really building on the insights that were gleaned from past investigations and efforts. So I, you know, in short, I think, you know, the opportunity to, to engage with, you know, phenomena and, and really be involved with a, a, a research project that could open new doors of understanding relative to our own, our own reality. And, uh, you know, could you know very well could be the you know give us some key insights into the nature of our own existence in the universe is something that is uh, inspiring and compelling. Very interesting. So with that, do you feel that your own opinion of everything from the phenomena that's happening compared to how it's tested your own spirituality has changed you as a person? And we have about uh, 65 seconds. Sure. Um, you know, if anything, it's, it, it has been incredibly humbling. And with every day that passes by and, and the older I get, you know, I, I, I come to realize the less I know. I don't know if you've, you've ever felt that way in your lives, but I, I feel like the older, the older I get, the less I really know. And I, I feel like we're just barely scratching the surface of understanding that. I mean, understanding the nature of our own consciousness um, is, you know, is a whole puzzle to put together. And, uh, and I, I, it, it's, it's, I think we're just getting started. Oh man, I could just Bob. They're just getting started, my friend. Just getting I started. I agree. I I agree. And as a scientist, I can tell you, every time I learn new things as a scientist, I reveal many times more questions than the one I just answered. Every time you learn more, you have more questions. Absolutely. I know that. Gen- that gentlemen, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Our monthly feature, Science Bob and Friends, with scientist Bob McGuire, formerly of, oh, goodness, Bob, I just went blank on your university. Virginia Virginia Tech. Tech Virginia Tech University and the legendary owner of Skinwalker Ranch, Mr. Brandon Fugel. We continue with Skinwalker Talk on Spaced Out Radio coming up right after this. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. 
Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Reminder to all of you that if you miss portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. 
Tonight we are talking Science Bob and Friends, our monthly scientific feature here on the Mighty SOR with scientist Bob McGuire and our special guest tonight, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, Brandon Fugel. And Bob, I have to tell you before we get started here, Brandon and I were talking before the show, and I tell you, I like him even more. Why? He's a diehard Guns N' Roses fan, just like I am, man. <laughs> diehard. Yeah, lo- love Guns N' Roses, 80s hair metal, uh, along with a, a good dose of new wave, uh, you know, oh, techno. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's a weird combination uh, between Def Leppard, uh, Guns N' Roses, Poison, uh, along yes. with uh, Depeche Mode, OMD, Erasure, nice. Duran Duran. And again, just I'm a child of the eighties, I confess, and so I, I to a degree I'm I'm stuck back in that era and still enjoying kind of both the music and the uh, the pop culture of the time, especially during this hellish twenty twenty that we're Oof. all having to endure. Exactly. I can tell you're probably like me. You had a big giant crush in the eighties on the Bengals lead singer Susanna Hoffs. Oh, is she pretty? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the age like of an objection. MTV. Yeah, oh, music, yes. vi- music, television. Uh, what a what an amazing time uh, where literally, I think there there was a, a great renaissance of uh, music and art, pop culture, media. You know, you name it. Bob, I know you yeah, want to Bob- ask some serious questions here now. I do, but I do want to comment. There's nothing wrong with Axl Rose, and when Mark Thank Knopfler you. did, I want, I want my, uh, I want my MTV. We all turned on to it. Uh, Brandon, let's go <laughs> into one, a uh, one serious question here that I think uh, our audience is curious about, and uh, as as I am, can you tell us, Brandon, about any others that are involved in supporting, funding, and conducting the observational work, observational work at Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, uh, are there others? And if there are others, uh, what can you tell us about them? Uh, good question. You know, this has been an entirely privately funded effort. Um, and, you know, I, I acquired the ranch, of course, from Mr. Bigelow in April of 2016. Um, a utilizing private funds and and really uh, with the focus on keeping not only my identity uh, confidential <clears throat> as the owner, as I didn't want to to have any of my involvement with the uh, with the ranch in this effort to to compromise or distract from my uh, my my professional uh, efforts and my my more conventional business, but uh, but I also. Uh, wanted to m- really maintain a high level of integrity in in really keeping it private and and bringing in a new team uh, that would bring a whole uh, I think new multidisciplinary approach to to Skinwalker Ranch and to the investigation um, not only delving into the history and interacting with some of the the previous participants, some of the amazing scientists and people that uh, that came before us, but also, you know, developing the the scientific protocols and the instrumentation that would help us, I think, take the investigation to the next level. So this has really been a, a privately funded effort that I have uh, that I have uh, been funding. Uh, you know, the History Channel series. Uh, you know, I just in full disclosure, I have yet to put one penny in my own pocket. Um, you know, I, I am grateful to history and A&E and that and Prometheus, who is my uh, my executive producer and partner in that, you know, they have provided uh, additional resource uh, on top of what I have been providing for years in order to bring third party experts, engineering talent and uh, and others into the equation to help collaborate with the team and to, to assist. I mean, we've had, you know, you know, an, a whole other level of, you know, everything from ground penetrating radar studies to drone uh, surveys, you know, thermography of the, the ranch to, to really, I think, I think employing a new set of aggressive experiments and, um, and, and, and I think, uh, scientific research in order to advance uh the uh 
the program at Skinwalker Ranch. So it's, you know, full disclosure, it is, it is a privately funded effort. You know, the government is not involved in any way, shape or form other than being interested in how things unfold and, you know, wanting to be briefed on the, uh, the reality of what we're experiencing and what we are documenting on the property. I, I have never held a, a security clearance or been involved with the government program in my life and uh, have, have kind of maintained my career as a, as, as a private business person and entrepreneur and uh, don't intend to change that, uh, especially when it comes to uh, leveraging my resources and my experience in service to you know, proper stewardship of Skinwalker Ranch. Okay, that's great. Let me give you a, a two-parter and let, let Dave jump in here. Uh, well, first of all, how did the History Channel show come about and what are their and your longer-term intentions for Skinwalker Ranch? Good question. You know, people involved with the History Channel uh, were, were reaching out to me for over a year before I would even agree to take a meeting. In fact, they were very, very persistent and uh, and on a, on a weekly basis, I was being bombarded by requests through my ranch manager, you know, Jim Morse or my superintendent, Thomas Winterton. And I was frankly not interested. I was not excited about opening uh, things up uh, yet. I felt like, you know, we were in the middle of conducting very serious scientific research on the property, and I did not want to be distracted from that. And uh, it was only after about a year of persistence that I finally, uh, with, with having the proper confidentiality agreements being signed, uh, agreed to take, you know, a few key meetings with producers and with those involved with, you know, the History Channel and A&E and in, in service to at least discussing the potential of documenting uh, and filming what what we have been involved with out at Skinwalker Ranch, uh, you know, I I immediately uh, you know stated that you know I would only consider you know entering into any type of agreement for an investigative series or letting television cameras into the property if number one uh, you know they you know they had to commit legally that they would um, only present the truth, the facts. I, I would not allow anything to be fabricated or contrived and uh, was not interested in being part of any effort that, uh, that was not, you know, centered 100% on authenticity and truth. Number two, I didn't have any interest in bringing outsiders into the equation and you know, some type of casting call type of effort uh, relative to the participants that would be involved with the series. I, I demanded that it would, be, you know, they'd have to involve my team that has been with me in many cases for decades. Um, and they're people that I trust. And, uh, and those were my two primary conditions to, to really engaging with the History Channel or, or really any media effort relative to the property. Uh, I was I was pleased that both conditions were agreed to without hesitation, um, but they came back with their own condition. In, in order to proceed forward, they felt that uh, that I needed to be involved, and they felt in in order to authentically present what was happening at Skinwalker Ranch and to to let the public in and to have a peek behind the scenes as to to what was what is really happening, uh, and really the nature of of our efforts, you know, it was, they felt it was important that I reveal my identity as the owner of the property and be involved with the effort. Otherwise, you know, they felt that you know the credibility would not only be questioned, but the 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 real story and the motivation behind our efforts would would be really. I think not fully realized um, and, and really, you know, probably not see its full potential and be questioned ultimately by the public at large. And, you know, I've mentioned, you know, 
over the course of the last hour that you know, I view my ownership as a stewardship, as uh, you know, as an important responsibility. And you know, I, I feel that the the information uh, and the insights that have been gleaned um, need to be shared with the public. I feel that that we don't own the truth. I feel like no one should have a corner on the truth. And in, in matters of discovery and science, you know, our findings should be presented to the public. Uh, I feel like we're all we're all part of uh, a greater family, and you know, hopefully, this will advance. Uh, I think our understanding of our world and and the universe as we know it. Brandon, what makes you different from Robert Bigelow? Mr. Bigelow was very secretive. He didn't allow any press there outside of George Knapp. He was very, very sticky with what was actually brought out into the public by Skinwalker Ranch. You're saying you want to do things a little bit differently, yet you still use a lot of the same scientists that Mr. Bigelow used as well. So what makes your game plan different from what he was doing? Uh, good question. I, I have great respect for Robert Bigelow. I consider him a friend, and I, I, I hope that our effort uh, honors uh, the past and uh, and the legacy that he has created. I, I, I have great respect for the fact that he has had the courage to come forward uh, as a successful business person, as someone high profile you know, to acknowledge the reality of the phenomena and, and those things that he has experienced, I think uh, takes great courage and moxie. And there are very few uh, credible, successful business leaders that have had uh, not only the, uh, the willingness to come forward, but also put their money where their mouth is. And I think, you know, Robert Bigelow has done both. I think that the biggest difference other than, you know, there's a significant age difference between us, uh, you know, we're decades apart in age is, you know, I, I, I have approached, you know, this, uh, this research at Skinwalker Ranch uh, with the intention of being transparent and sharing our findings with the public. And uh, I have, I've, I have been very focused on getting not only to the bottom of the truth, but also disseminating that truth. And that was part of what motivated me to ultimately enter into the agreement with the History Channel to produce this investigative series, uh, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, is to, to provide a, a, a conduit, if you will, to, to bring the public inside the gates for the first time and to show them right there firsthand what is happening uh, on a regular basis with the team. And I think, you know, you know, being able to let the public experience and uh, to be able to witness uh, the, the results of a lot of our, our, our investigation and our experiments is, is important. And it's an important part of, I think, moving disclosure forward and, and moving I think the dialogue and the quality of the dialogue surrounding these topics uh, forward as well. Uh, we've seen too many uh, media efforts that have been compromised or, or frankly lack the level of professionalism, uh, dignity, or scientific rigor that I think this, this uh, really deserves. And so it, you know, it's it's not a perfect medium. Uh, you know, I cringe a little bit at the uh, some of the the dramatic music, you know, some of the the editing that goes into it. But for the most part, I mean, I I'm very proud of you know my partnership with uh, with Prometheus and history, and I believe that we are uh, we're we're moving this forward uh, like no other effort before us. Brandon, that's, that's do, you, do you have, sorry, Bob, do you have the same contracts with the United States government as Robert Bigelow has? And are you able to discuss those if you do? <laughs> I have no contracts with the United States government. Zilch, zero. Um, we've, you know, we've been asked to brief, uh, you know, 
people within the the government and the intelligence community relative to you know the uh the results of our research over the course of the last four and a half years under my ownership and stewardship but there is absolutely no contractual relationship that exists and no formal engagement this is a an entirely privately funded and led enterprise and the uh the multidisciplinary team that we've brought together in service to exploring these topics on the ranch and to to delve into what is really at play here is is a, is a sincere and i think a i i think an unprecedented effort um, that will hopefully help not only engage the public but i think elevate the the topics that that are being uh, addressed so there is no the, the, you know this is uh this is entirely you know a privately funded and uh, led effort and um you know I, I no offense to the government i i have great respect for uh for our government i i love the united states of america we we live in the greatest nation in the history of the world I consider myself a, a very patriotic person, but you know, if you want something done right, uh, you know, I, 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 if you want to see something truly innovative brought forward, and you want to see results, and you want to be able to execute with precision, uh, you don't typically turn to the government; you turn to the private sector. Uh, and yeah. you know, we're trying to use, you know, good principled approaches to to really this investigation uh, in service to, to getting results. I just I, want the truth. That's, 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 that's a great answer. And just personally, uh, I've been a scientist most of my life, but I started two companies to do exactly what you're talking about. Lo, let me jump into a quick question because I don't expect you to be a the theoretical physicist, but I am absolutely certain one event or more, more than one event has the right kind of people interested. So just just as a preface, uh, Juan Maldacena is an extremely well-known theoretical physicist at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. And he has proposed an actual method based on theory of stabilizing a traversable wormhole by using entangled particles at both ends of the wormhole. Now, I'm not expecting you to tell me any of that kind of physics, but I am expecting that you have had a lot of interest in people trying to figure out how to measure things that act like or look like wormholes. You bet. And, you know, I, I, I'm very proud of our team. I think, you know, Dr. Taylor, you know, this, this, uh, this past year, yeah, you know, we've had three physicists on site for months, completely 100% focused on, you know, not only the the scientific research and the protocols, but also uh, really, I think, approaching these topics with uh, with the appropriate degree of scientific rigor. Uh, Dr. Taylor, uh, you know, his credentials are are. Uh, are very impressive. I mean, he has multiple PhDs, three master's degrees, you know, does work with NASA, uh, with, with a number of, uh, with, with a number of entities. I mean, you have Dr. Jim Sagala, who, you know, has been a, an incredible member of our team. Who's also a, uh, a physicist who's, who's been involved with, with a lot of projects and, uh, you know, my own Eric Bard, uh, who I have trusted for over a decade as, is a consulting scientist on a number of projects that uh, that have not been uh, in in m most cases uh, unusual or controversial in any in any in any way. In fact, I've I've had Eric uh, involved to vet uh, certain technologies and certain claims, and he has proven uh, again over the course of the last decade to be an invaluable resource and a trusted confidant when it comes to science. And, and I, I, I think we all are open to, to, you know, employing the right type of approaches and, and, and also, you know, looking at the, not only the literature, but collaborating 
with uh, with others within the the scientific realm in order to get to the bottom of what is really at work at Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, that's great. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put one question off till later. So um, uh, I am particularly interested in uh, all of the radio frequency and electromagnetic emissions that have been recorded in one way or another at Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, has have have your team or others come and analyzed? the actual emissions that are being captured to look uh, for the presence of non-random or information-bearing signals. You bet. Yeah. I think what, what we have seen with the number of the events that have occurred that we captured on camera um, involves electromagnetic anomalies and a fingerprint, if you will, uh, that, that, that seems to follow the phenomena. Uh, call it the exhaust uh, that, that would come of it, or, or at least the residue. Uh, you know, in, there's any number of theories that, uh, that we're, we're really addressing or exploring right now. But uh, for example, you know, we've seen on, on so many occasions when, when unidentified aerial phenomena occur, uh, there are correlative um, events involving electromagnetic phenomena and uh and also you know you see you know animals reacting to to what is happening in the area you see um yeah even acute medic medical episodes that have unfortunately occurred uh in tandem with uh, some of the events that have been witnessed and recorded on the ranch but uh the the rf and uh, you know, you know the other uh, electromagnetic, uh, and I think more, more. I don't know how to to put it, but uh, you know, we're able to take data and track the uh, some of the signatures associated with the phenomena in order to help separate the signal from the noise. And you know, perhaps that's one of the best ways of describing the nature of our right. investigation and the problem set before us is, you know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things that frankly uh, have a natural prosaic explanation associated with them. And there are other things that occur that, uh, that are truly unexplained or anomalous and having a multidisciplinary team involved and really utilizing, you know, scientific rigor is, is I think, helping us separate the signal from the noise and to be able to, to really focus in on those events and, right. and frankly, the, the readings that, that have the most credibility. Brandon, I'm going to get you to hold right there. Science Bob and Friends with our special guest, Skinwalker Ranch owner Brandon Fugel continues on Spaced Out Radio with Hour 2 next. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Hello, space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. 
The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumble Fuck? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumble Fuck. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spicing up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines Report. We are independent and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines Report. This is Amber Beckrud, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news. 
along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. Thank you so much for tuning us in. I am your host, Dave Scott. We welcome back everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. Remember to check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club, Wafta. Waftage is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Tonight, we continue with Science Bob and Friends, our monthly feature to look into the science side of everything paranormal. Our special guest tonight is the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, Brandon Fugel. Gentlemen, welcome back. Brandon, I want to ask a question that I'm getting a lot in our audience chat rooms right now, and that is, it's great that over the years we have heard the stories of of Skinwalker Ranch, about about entities, about cattle mutilations, about about UFOs, potential alien contact, everything about it. But in the end, we, all we've heard is stories. There has been no real evidence that has been shown to the public about what truly is happening there. Are you almost at the point where you would release some of that footage to show the public that this is real phenomena going on? Yeah. What are you talking about? In the first 20 minutes of episode one, I revealed more than it's been revealed in 20 years. Um, I mean, I showed videographic evidence. I showed video of actual unidentified aerial phenomena over the ranch, other, other luminous phenomena that we've experienced and we've recorded on the Mesa. I, uh, you know, also brought forward the fact that we've had very real unexplained acute medical episodes on the property uh, that have occurred that continue to baffle scientists and medical professionals. I don't know what people expect. I mean, they went 20 years hearing the same anecdotal stories, which are interesting and they're intriguing. And I, I love, you know, many of those people I, I know, and I love those people that were involved with uh, the investigation in, in decades past. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit baffled by some of the criticism in that, you know, if people really are paying attention I feel like we brought forward some of the most compelling evidence in, and again, in 20 minutes, I feel like I brought forward more, more compelling evidence and correlative phenomena than anyone else has in this, in this, uh, in this area of, of investigation. I mean, at a time when everyone is analyzing the same, whatever, you know, one minute of footage or seconds of footage that is released um which is which is compelling by the way you know uh, you know relative to the the what the navy pilots experienced and whatnot um you know we continued week after week to present what was really cumulatively eight hours of scientific investigation and experience on the most scientifically studied paranormal ranch or property on the planet and so um, forgive me, I, I don't mean to sound defensive, but I, I, I chuckle to a degree at some of the criticism because I, I don't know what people are talking about um, when, they, uh, when they say that the, we haven't brought evidence forward or they're waiting for new evidence. I mean, you know, we've, I think we've done that um, on, on a level that no other program has, uh, has before. And frankly, no other owner or or really i think leader involved with this with 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 an effort like this has really been this forthcoming or this uh this engaged i mean i i i have since going public 
in March, I have made an effort to engage on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and I've, I've answered, you know, people directly and respectfully relative to, you know, their questions, their criticisms and concerns relative to not only the investigation at Skinwalker Ranch and, and our efforts, but also, you know, offering kind of my opinion and insights as, as we have tried to pull together, I think, you know, one of the most cohesive um, records to date of, of really tracking, you know, the, you know, this, this high strangeness that we continue to experience on the property. Okay. That's, that's really, that's, that is a uh, uh, really uh, great. I want to just uh, uh, expand upon uh, how I, as a scientist, would uh, would view your data set uh, it, it, in that uh, I see the videos and all of the, the all of that stuff is great is great you have a really good team but the way typical science is done is uh, the scientific uh, uh, observational science is done which is clearly what's going on there observational science and you may or may not have formed some falsifiable hypotheses and then tried to gather data that tell you whether or not your hypothesis is true or false uh, what I'm suggesting that might be beneficial is if some of the data you've gathered after you've done your own initial analysis, I mean, you got to give your team time to take a look at stuff. It might be useful sure. if you go to a group such, I'm going to give you an example, a group such as the Scientific Coal uh, Coalition for the Study of UAP and engage with them. And you may already be doing this, but I'm suggesting that if you engage with an, an, an institution like SCU, uh, then you'd have all sorts of minds and eyes and ideas uh, taking a look at your data. And it, is a, it was a great thing to just let me comment on your or talking earlier about your early work uh, for building your business, because you were doing data science applied to business. So what I'm suggesting to you is that more eyes would work on the data at no cost to anyone other than putting the data up for them to look at in an entity like SCU, which is already set up to uh, do, do the kind of work that would make it wide open, no restrictions and so forth on uh, who got to work on the data so long as they were inside of SCU. Are you amenable to uh, discussing this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think that, you know, the fact that we've come forward and, and brought in third party experts, you know, li literally every step of the way, um, as, if, as you watch the series, you see, we, we brought in, the appropriate credentialed engineering talent and other scientific collaborators in order to, in order to, to conduct a lot of the experiments and add additional voices and insight to, to what not only we're, we're proceeding with, with a lot of our experimental protocols, but also to be able to analyze the data and the results of those experiments and those activities. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I, I'll speak, on behalf of almost literally everyone who came in from the outside over the course of the last year to collaborate with the team. I, I think people for the most part came onto the ranch um, as skeptics and you know, especially those with, with, you know, scientific credentials. And I think for the most part, everyone left scratching their heads and acknowledging the fact that we are truly experiencing some anomalous activity and, and you know, we're experiencing phenomena that cannot be easily explained. Um, but I, I will say this, uh, you know, what has been done in the past from a scientific standpoint to try to understand our world and to understand some of these, these claims has failed miserably. Um, and, and I think a new approach to the problem set, new approaches to, to really analyzing the phenomena and, and to be able to, <clears throat> again, separate the signal from the noise 
I think is, is, is needed in order to advance this. And so I'm, I'm bringing not only a fresh set of multidisciplinary experts and people to the table, but, you know, I'm coming at this as a non-scientist, as an entrepreneur and someone who wants to get results in my world. If you don't execute with precision, if you don't get results, you get fired, you're terminated and you, you don't have endless years of funding. You can't just chase your tail indefinitely. You have to show results and you have to show progress or, or you're dead, <laughs> at least professionally. And, you know, I'm trying to, uh, to bring that same, you know, level of attention and, and a focus on execution and results to the ranch investigation that will hopefully, ultimately, I think, uh, help us understand what is happening and bring forward, I think, new discoveries and insights relative to the phenomena. Bob, are you back? That's we were great. Having a little bit, we were uh, having a little tech yeah, difficulty there. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Sorry about the drop. Okay, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, our, our, our Brandon, are you uh, t- answering a question from Dave, or are you ready for another one? Well, I, I bring like it on. S- I'd like to sneak in a question here, uh, Bob, if you don't mind. In regards to the scientific side that you are are doing there, a lot of your team that has been there has been there for quite a number of years. Do you rotate new scientists in and out just to see if they get the same type of, of results in the experiments that are going on? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we haven't, we haven't, I haven't owned the property for, for really that, that, you know, that long a period of time yet. I, you know, I, I think bringing Dr. Travis Taylor and Dr. Sagala on site to collaborate with my principal investigator, Eric Bard, and some of the others was, was, I think, you know, one of my um, attempts to, to, to not only infuse, you know, new perspective and a new dynamic into the, uh, the investigation, but ho- hopefully, you know, to, to propel it forward. I think uh, bringing different minds to the table and, and also, you know, bringing people who don't necessarily agree or see, see these topics in the same way. I think it's important. I think challenging each other is important. I think, you know, coming with a skeptical, critical eye is important. Uh, I, I, you know, when I bought the ranch, I was very, very upfront with Mr. Bigelow about the fact that I had never seen a UFO, a ghost, an orb, or anything of the sort in my life. Um, I was literally approaching this stewardship and my ownership of the ranch as, as a healthy skeptic. And I felt it was, just to be open with you, I, I felt that there was probably a 95% chance that there was a natural prosaic explanation for what had been claimed and witnessed on the property for decades. And uh, I, I felt the most likely result of bringing my team in and introducing, you know, a, a fresh perspective and, and frankly investing in a new set of uh, scientific protocols and, and equipment would would help us get to the bottom of it and, and ultimately reveal that there was a, uh, a natural or, or I think a more mundane explanation for what was being witnessed, not only on Skinwalker Ranch, but in the basin. Um, I was very surprised to find that, uh, that I was wrong and uh, that, that there is truth and reality to what has been claimed. And, it, I, you know, what we're what we are experiencing and what we are recording uh, on Skinwalker Ranch is absolutely real, and it's it's both inspiring and terrifying. Hmm. Yeah, that's re- that's really interesting. Let me ask a d- different question. Uh, lots of people uh, have watched the show and seen that there's evidence that uh, there are things going on underground. Uh, to, uh, well, I want to uh, ask a question about the limits to which you're willing to go. For, for, for example, would you uh, use 
the kind of thumpers that oil explorers use to try to map the uh, subterranean uh, layers? Uh, potentially, I, I think, you know, we're taking right now presently a, a more aggressive approach to, to digging into what is happening on the ranch, both literally and figuratively. Uh, my, my biggest concern relative to disturbing the earth and, and any digging activities was, was really born out of the fact that we, we seem to experience some very negative um, events uh, that were, that were correlative to, to some of the activities, the digging activities on the ranch, most notably Thomas Winterton, my uh, beloved superintendent's, uh, you know, negative experience. I mean, he ended up in the emergency room, uh, we believe as a result of, you know, some of his activities on the property. And that, uh, that, that caused me to take a step back because the, the health and safety of those, um, you know, the, those involved with this effort, you know, as part of our ranch family is, is something that we do not take lightly. And, you know, the, the, um, the diligence and caution that you see um, on the television show was not staged. It was not contrived. I mean, I truly did task Dragon or Brian Arnold, who is my head of security, is is being, you know, really my eyes and ears to ensure that the you know the safety of those uh, that were participating in this this investigative series and these, this investig you know, this, this whole effort would be, you know, that they would be protected. And, uh, so we, we've tried to, to approach, um, our activities on the ranch with, with a degree of caution, uh, because of some of what has happened. We've had, we've had a number of people in the last year that have been injured, uh, and to have sustained all sorts of, you know, strange, not only injuries, but illness, you know, we believe associated with, you know, their um, activities on the ranch. And we were concerned we don't take that lightly. And we're trying to improve our, uh, our protocols in order to address that. But yeah, okay, let, long let, let me, answer. Let, yeah. let me, let me, let me poke at that just a little bit. So Travis Taylor had uh, uh, what appeared to be ionizing radiation burns uh, when they were fiddling around one of the old uh, structures on the place of uh, digging around, investigating. And uh, I'm assuming that that has not been repeated. But let me, let me dovetail that with, I think I recall you're bringing in a Native American person. And after you brought in the Native American person, following the uh, ionizing radiation incident, did that cease? I, I don't think that there was a connection between bringing the, uh, the Native American um, expert, you know, it, you know, onto the property and, and really, uh, you know, the, the effects or, the, or, or, you know, seeing some of the other things cease. I, I, it, there really wasn't a, a correlation. In fact, the the phenomena is transient in nature. It's 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 completely unpredictable. One moment we'll bring in experts that will survey the entire effort area and find that there are there is no trace evidence of any anything harmful, and then literally the next day <laughs> something will happen, or the you know the dosimeters will go off, or you'll see that the trifield meter. Uh, react, you know, erratically, you know, and, and really give evidence to the fact that there's something going on. But I think the, the fact that the, the phenomenon on the property is transient, unpredictable, and, uh, and difficult to pin down really speaks to how challenging this whole process is and really the nature of the investigation. Can you give us kind of even a rough estimate of the frequency with which these transient phenomena occur? Have you gotten done any kind of measurement in your stewardship? You mean how often 
How frequent? Yes. How, yeah, how frequent place. are they? Oh, um, we'll go weeks without anything strange happening. In fact, you know, I had been visiting the ranch for six months following my acquisition without personally witnessing anything unusual with my own eyes. And uh, I just found it to be a very peaceful place, even though we had captured on both video and camera, you know, a number of uh, anomalies, you know, you know, unidentified objects over the ranch and, you know, a number of other strange, strange things. We, uh, you know, I was, I was very skeptical. I, I, I really had yet to observe anything, you know, going, you know, almost a, right around six months. And it wasn't, it wasn't until I had owned the property for over six months that I had my own experience with multiple witnesses with me by my side to, to, to those events that I had to take a step back. And, and frankly, uh, I think change my perspective a little bit and, and the approach take it, I think a, a bit more aggressive approach to addressing the, uh, the research on the property. Let me you get him one more unsee. question before. Let me let me get yeah. him one more question before we go to break because it's uh, still uh, it's of interest. I don't recall there being any further pursuit in studying uh, the hidden room that was found. Or, or, or is that still being pursued? You bet. You bet. You know the, the the unfortunate aspect of the television medium is you know who knows how much and ninety percent or more of what is recorded, uh, it ends up on the cutting room floor, uh, you know, for every hour, uh, of television that is presented, you know, there, who knows how many hours, uh, that, that, that don't end up being presented. And, you know, it's a, it's an imperfect process. Uh, to answer your question, yes, we've been going back into not only trying to investigate the nature of, of, the history of the property, uh, but also, you know, really some of those initial investigations relative to the sealed room uh, in the basement and, and, and also a lot of what has been witnessed and recorded in the past, not only in the ranch house, but also the old homesteads. The old homesteads have been really the scene of so many uh, accounts and, and we're talking multiple witness accounts and recorded events that defy natural explanation and trying to focus our efforts on those old haunting homesteads and, and trying to figure out why some of the activity seems to be centered in those areas of the property. You know, that's, that's a key part of our investigation. Right. Thank you so much, Brandon, for that. As we continue on with Spaced Out Radio on Science Bob and Friends here on the Mighty SOR, we're going to continue our great chat with myself, Science Bob McGuire, and the owner of the legendary Skinwalker Ranch, Brandon Fugel. We continue right after this. Space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. 
We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hey, space travelers, this is John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us. 
and entertain the likes of your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button, our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. On Instagram, follow us at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. We continue with a fantastic interview tonight with Brandon Fugel, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, here on Science Bob and Friends, my cohort, and the brilliant and talented Science Bob McGuire is helping us host this tonight. Bob, take it away. Okay, so... uh... You know, when uh, animals uh, have been attacked on the ranch, um, I'm sure that that caused a lot of controversy uh, when the uh, llamas got attacked. But uh, but let's ask some science questions rather than just uh, talk about the attack, which was, I'm sure, horrifying to you and everybody else there. Uh, were okay. there, uh, were, I'm sure, I'm sure. And were, were there analysis of the wounds for DNA, hair samples, what kind of forensics? Uh, were done on the uh, wounds? Good question. The, the attack on the alpacas, um, which which was completely unexpected. I mean, uh, you know, Candace, Lindy, and Tom Lewis, our, our caretakers, were, were actually insistent on bringing the alpacas on the property and really caring for them and, and creating an environment that was safe. I mean, that's why they were situated in the corral closest to the ranch house. I mean, literally steps from the ranch house. And, uh, and you know, I, they immediately fell in love with these animals, you know, gave them names. Um, and, you know, really everyone had not only the best of intention, but, but, did not believe that they would come into harm's way, even though we've had some strange events occur and some that have been disturbing, you know, no one anticipated what ended up unfolding. And uh, in short, with the, without getting into, I, I, you know, I'm not convinced that the attack on the alpacas was, was necessarily, you know, anything paranormal. Um, uh, you know, I, th- I think the circumstances uh, around around the attack were a little bit um, intriguing uh, and disturbing, but you know we, we we were just you know once once it was very apparent that there was an issue, um, I think you know getting them off of the ranch and out of harm's way was was of you know greatest concern. And you know the the cows, the livestock. I mean we've we've been running you know cows on the property. Uh, with uh, with partners over the course of the last four and a half years. I mean, this is an agricultural property. This is a working ranch. And in order to, to, to keep the grass down and to, frankly, avoid the place becoming a fire hazard, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not only responsible, but it's absolutely necessary to maintain those type of activities on the property. And, you know, there hadn't been any cattle mutilations reported for many, many, many years. And, and again, I'm a skeptic. I... I approached the uh, the stewardship of the property from from more of a, a skeptical point of view, and didn't really necessarily believe that we would encounter anything of uh, of that nature. Uh, you know, the incident with the cow uh, that uh, that was shown at the end of the uh, the season, you know, season one of our investigative series, was shocking to us, um, and I think most shocking was was not just the um, the death of the cow that seemed very unusual, especially you know when when hearing the the veterinarian you know the veterinarian's opinion on it, but also all of the other um, events that were occurring surrounding that event. Uh, you know, it's one thing to have a cow die on a ranch, but it's another thing to have a cow die. You know, have all of the equipment, you know, the tri-field meters going crazy, you know, <laughs> multiple smartphones malfunctioning. Uh, and, and by the way, both an iPhone and a Samsung phone that are, you know, completely malfunctioning simultaneous with the discovery of, of this, this, uh, 
this cow um, that that remains really disturbing and unexplained. But then, upon pulling up the camera surveillance to see an object that was that was moving at arguably over a thousand miles an hour above the tree line, you know, above the cow when it was taking its last breaths, uh, very very disturbing and uh, very interesting. Add to that the fact that the uh, the cow, which was drug out to the corner of the property to decompose and uh, to be laid to rest, has yet to be touched by any scavenger. Explain really? that. After over a year, that cow has yet to be touched by any scavenger. We've had other animals die on that property, end up, you know, carcasses or whatever, you know, whether it be, you know, birds or whatever that, that, you know, I mean, it's a big silver 500 acre piece of property. It's a ranch. Um, Animals, you know, come and go and die. And, you know, to, to see this, this, uh, this cow and this carcass remain completely untouched and intact after over a year and some pretty brutal seasons, some, some weather. I mean, we're talking below zero temperatures on up to over 100 degree temperatures and, you know, quite a diverse landscape and environment. It defies explanation, gentlemen. It does. So let, let, so let, me, let, that. Let, me, let me go back to just one, one piece. Were there any forensics done on the alpacas at all? No, we we just had we had the doctor come out, the veterinarian that actually analyzed, dressed the wounds, treated the animal. I think he felt like it was it was predator activity. Um, he didn't think that there was anything necessarily unusual or or you know extraordinarily disturbing, other than the fact that you know we were all quite shaken by by the attack and by the events, but. Um, no, the, the the event with the cow, you know, was a was a, a completely different matter in class of uh, of event, in my Re- opinion. Really strange, Dave. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of looking at it because I live in a ranching area where I am. So the fact that you put alpacas out there, and I learned this when I moved up here that in order to keep predatory animals away from horses and cattle. Normally up here, the ranchers will use uh, bulls, giant, you know, very big, large bulls. They will use donkeys. They will use llamas and alpacas in order to do that. Now, the on a one-on-one scale, an alpaca or a llama can take care of a cougar or even a, a black bear, not a problem. But if you have a, a pack of coyotes or you have a pack of wolves in there and it's like seven against one or ten against one, the chances of the alpaca actually protecting the herd – or the donkey or or the llama is going to be very, very difficult for that singular animal to do. So a lot of animal rights people and people who love animals are sitting there saying, well, why did you do this and criticizing you about that? But is it a matter of, you know, that's what happens on ranches and farmyards to protect the livestock while they're out grazing? Yeah, that's, that's, that's unfortunately pretty, pretty typical. I mean, especially when you're in a remote area, out there it's it's impossible to predict what may happen and and frankly you're going to have things happen i mean we have we have all sorts of you know wildlife on the property i mean we've we've seen mountain lions captured on camera in our surveillance footage you know all sorts of predatory animals that uh, that make the ranch their home and you know i i think we have to respect that we have to respect the property um, you know, do we want to put any, any animal in harm's way? Absolutely not. And I was, I was actually pretty offended and, and hurt that people would think that we would, would purposely do so, especially after, you know, our caretakers so lovingly brought the property or brought the, the animals on the property and really had, you know, the best of intentions, uh, relative to, to caring for them. So it, it was unfortunate. And, you know, you learn, you learn from the past. You know, we've uh, we're trying to to do a better job and be more aware. You know, and frankly, I I think you know being more sensitive to to the concerns that have been brought up is is something that that I think is important. We respect 
I have all points of view and you know I want to I I want to let people know that you know this is a learning process for all of us. I mean this is evolutionary. Uh, we don't have all the answers. We don't presume to have the answers. We're just simply trying to uh, to carry you know this research forward and do it in the best way we know how. And you know along the way we're we're going to we're going to stub our toes and we're going to learn some things the hard way. It's it's life. You know, no one's perfect and there is no perfect experiment. It just like there's, there's no perfect uh, circumstance. And here on the ranch, there are so many crazy diverse anomalies that occur that are unpredictable. It, it just adds that much more <laughs> uh, complication to what is already, I think a, uh, a challenging, uh, right. challenging scenario. Okay, let me uh, let me dive into a, a, a particular area of interest uh, to me. And Dave and I are both followers of uh, Skyhub, and I'm a, a member, contributor, and advisor. And uh, Steve McDaniel is the uh, technical leader of Skyhub, and we did an interview with uh, Steve here in last month's show. And Skyhub, uh, to me personally, would seem to be a, a natural instrument to go to a place like Skinwalker Ranch in that it is uh, on seven days a week, 24 hours a day, always vigilant, and it's using really modern technology in that it's got artificial intelligence uh, finding signatures and triggering on those signatures and recording anomalous events through all sorts of sensors. Uh, and, uh, I'm just wondering if, if, uh, you and the team are amenable to discussing, uh, th- th- a, 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 an activity like sky hub being positioned in and around the ranch. Sure. It, sure. As, as long as it doesn't, uh, as long as it meets certain standards and it's, it's an open platform and that we can all, we can all benefit from the data and and work together to to hopefully um you know hopefully analyze the the data and the findings that come of that effort so i i think we're open to that um you know speaking on behalf of eric bard who is really our principal investigator out on the property and you know he's he's uh, on constant vigil i mean the guy doesn't sleep i've i've seen eric go for you know 48 to 72 hour uh, stints, you know, monitoring everything going on on the property. Uh, he's he's remarkable, and to have him joined by, you know, the likes of Dr. Taylor and also Thomas Winterton, and uh, and Dragon and the others that are that are there just simply as as uh, as you know partners in discovery is 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 great. So I, yeah, I think we would welcome that. Uh, I think introducing outside um, involvement and, you know, you know, another platform or a diversity of platforms that, that. uh... Oh, we seem to lost Brandon there for a second. We'll try and get him right back here on space. Out radio, Bob, just uh, hold on two seconds here. If you don't mind. And maybe we just lost Skype. No, I'm on. still on. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll try and get Brandon here. There he is. Hey, do you hear hey, me? Hey, Brandon. Did we I got you, you now. Where did it, Where did I lose you? Uh, you were talking about the introduction of a, a, a new element into the the scientific oh, yeah. uh, observation. Oh, so it only so it just dropped after a few seconds. Gosh, yeah. These bloody cell phones. You'd think that. Uh, you'd think. You'd, You'd think, think that uh, we'd have a more reliable um, communications infrastructure. Anyways, I think I got my point across. I yeah, we would we would welcome the opportunity to bring additional scientific instrumentation and monitoring equipment to the property and service to understanding the nature of the phenomena and getting to the bottom of the truth. Okay, one one, one thing I just wanted to add, to just and, and I'm happy to hear you say what you said. And the reason I'm happy to hear it is 
from the from its very first day, Skyhub's job was open source, open specification, data collected openly in the cloud and available to any and all for scientific work. And uh, given that that's kind of your your opening remark, so that you could use it and SCU could use it and any other scientist that wanted to work on it could use it. I think that's a terrific thing. And that is, that is a very welcome thing. And I'm sure that Skyhub uh, 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 scientists and engineers and so forth, and, and including me, uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be talking with you and Eric about uh, about what we can do that won't be in the way. Uh, that will, so let me ask another technical question before I turn it over to Dave. Are you aware of uh, uh, TV or FM transmitters in say the thirty to forty mile radius around Skinwalker Ranch? Uh. I, I, the team has performed a full audit of everything within the surrounding area. I mean, we've, we've, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I can speak specifically to everything that has been cataloged other than the fact that I know, you know, Eric and the team has, has been very diligent in trying to identify those, those things within the basin that, uh, that would potentially um, interfere or, or, you know, create false positives, if you will. Okay. Um, but that's not where I'm going. That's not where I'm going. I, I, I'm absolutely okay. convinced. I'm absolutely convinced that they've done that. The reason I ask is uh, there's a bunch of unique technology coming available at very, very low prices uh, that use large emitters as the act of like TV and FM FM, uh, transmitters as the active emitters in an otherwise passive radar system. So if you had a large transmitter nearby, uh, 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 a collection of four antennas and a small computer hooked to these four antennas could actually have a passive radar working at the ranch. So the, the reason for saying that is if, if an object appears over the ranch and it's, say, metallic, it would have a cross-section for radio signals, and we might see a reflection and even track it and maybe even sure. detect it when it's, when it's uh, being cloaked in some way. So uh, that was that was the reason for my question, and right. I will discuss that. I will discuss that with the team to see if something like that could be done. Have, have you uh, have you had radar on the site before? Well, we, we have we have several avionics receivers. Um, you know, we, we we've been actively tracking for years all of the the air traffic. You know, commercial private air traffic coming in and out of the the area in the basin and surrounding you know, surrounding locales, but, uh, and I, and I know Dr. Taylor specifically has been working with Eric on a, an expanded platform associated with, uh, really monitoring everything, you know, within the airspace. And again, it's all in service to being able to separate the signal from the noise, to be able to separate that, which, um, you know, is, is conventional from the unconventional. And and being able to to focus in on those events that actually uh, I think merit you know greater uh, focus and consideration. Oh, that sounds yeah, that'd be very good. Yeah, the the systems you're talking about are ADSB and UAT. I'm sure you've heard those terms, and they are valuable for calling out things you aren't really interested in. Uh, that that's that's really good news, Dave. Yeah, Brandon, we've got about uh, three and a half, four minutes here before we have to go to break at the top of the hour here. In regards to to the experimentation that is going on at Skinwalker Ranch, is a lot of that experiments trying to find answers to some of the predominant questions that we have in the field of the paranormal. Example, life after death. Are there portals? Are there different dimensions? 
you know, where are these UFOs coming from? Is that part of the focus of the research that is there? Uh, not, not, at a, not as of yet. I think, you know, the first several years of research really involved more observational science and observational, you know, scientific efforts. Uh, with the introduction of Travis Taylor, of Dr. Taylor and also Dr. Sagala into the team dynamic with Eric and Tom and Jim and Bryant, you know, we've seen a more aggressive um, set of experiments and, and research um, protocols in, in service to, as, as Travis uh, says uh, often, poking the hornet's nest. You know, if, if you watch the show, there's kind of a spirited interaction between Dragon, my head of security, and Dr. Taylor. Um, and, you know, Dr. Taylor has really been pushing for, you know, a, I think, a move beyond observational science to, to really engaging the phenomena, I think, on a, on a more aggressive level. And that, that has involved everything from, you know, the, the weather balloon experiments to the rocketry to bringing in, you know, ground penetrating radar and resist, resistivity studies and, you know, a whole host of, of experiments and, uh, and efforts that, that would hopefully, and I think has yielded some results and at least I think underscored the fact that we're dealing with very real unexplained phenomena. When you have literally every third party expert that comes to the ranch, these are credentialed, degreed professionals that come in from outside of Utah in most cases. And, and you have almost every one of them to, the, to a man that leaves the ranch scratching their head saying, I've never experienced this before. In all of my years of either you know, you know, balloon experiments, rocketry experiments, ground penetrating radar, yada, 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 in all of my years, I've never seen anything quite like this and have not experienced, you know, these type of anomalies that has to give hopefully the audience and, and those that are following our journey reason to step back and pause and take this seriously. This is not contrived. This is not fabricated. This is, this is real and we're presenting it unscripted there are no actors we're simply trying to show our journey in real time and let the viewer decide along with our team you know what to make of it oh that's really great yeah that's it's it's good to hear that other scientists are coming so let's 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 go with go uh, down that rabbit hole just just for a bit uh i'm sure that there are all sorts of liability uh, concerns and so forth. Uh, is there kind of a standard process to go through your principal investigator and your you legal department right. to get there? You, you Brandon, bet. I'm going to get we, I'm going to get you to answer that question when we come back from break here because we literally have about two seconds left before the commercials are going to sign on in here, gentlemen. Just sit tight. We have Skinwalker Ranch owner, Brandon Fugel. We have Science Bob McGuire. We continue with the Skinwalker Ranch Talk, heading into Hour 3 of Spaced Out Radio in a show that's just flying on by tonight. We'll be back. Space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Hey, Space Travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. 
Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spicing up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at Kajans.com. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news. 
along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and being a really, really awesome crowd. Thank you for everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Waftage. Waftage is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. We are continuing in hour number three of Skinwalker Ranch here on Science Bob and Friends. Brandon Fugel, owner of Skinwalker Ranch, is our special guest tonight with scientist Bob McGuire. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here, Dave. Glad to be with you. And the good news is... The good news is we are going to go the distance here tonight. We are going to forego the news tonight. I'm sorry, Captain Shirk. Don't don't take a frying pan to my head, but that's okay. We're going to forego it, and we are going to continue with Brandon right to the top of the hour. Bob, go right ahead. Okay, so and I apologize to the audience for asking a very relevant question too close to break. So rather than skip it, we're going to jump right back into it. Uh, Brandon, we were addressing the protocols the questions of dealing with uh, liability and other things for people to come on and do work on the ranch. Kind of go over your policy and processes for gaining acquisition to the ranch. Yeah, good question. Excellent question. We have required since day one confidentiality agreements and liability waivers be signed. The confidentiality agreements have been necessary because we frankly have, have not wanted to have material you know, disseminate it without, without it being properly vetted or, uh, or really reviewed by the team. Uh, we didn't want any, you know, premature um, claims being made or disclosure. And frankly, we, we don't want anything to compromise the integrity of our investigation. Um, liability uh, is, is something that we are also concerned about, especially given the history of the property. You know, anyone who comes on the property has to acknowledge that bad things happen um, on this property. There is a history of not only strange activity, but also, you know, you know, people being injured. You know, you know, having mysterious, unexplained illness. Uh, it's just part of the risk associated with with really, I think, being involved with the property. And so we, we, we make full disclosure of that, and we require acknowledgement and execution of agreements in order to, again, protect the integrity of the investigation and, uh, and, and I think, the, the future investigative efforts that, uh, that we have ongoing. So we, we've, had, we've had that in place um, over the years, and it's something that we've continued. Even the vendors and uh, the production team involved with the uh, with the uh, series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, have had to sign uh, liability waivers and confidentiality agreements um, in order to, a- again, 
you know, I think uh, have the, the, the proper disclosures and uh, precautions put into place. That sounds great, Dave. Yeah, in regards to how you have things set up there, and you talk about the NDAs that you have, what would, if you're talking about being very public and open with what is happening with Skinwalker Ranch, what is the purpose of the NDAs? Oh, just it, that's a really good question. We, we don't want information uh, going out being distributed without actually being reviewed by the team. Uh, for not only accuracy, but also to, to ensure that there isn't anything, <laughs> anything that, uh, that, that, that would be unprofessional. I, I mean, that, that wouldn't fit within, I think, the, the quality or the standard that we are trying to set with, uh, with our investigation. It's not about keeping things secret or, you know, being territorial. It's about protecting the integrity of the investigation and frankly, the participants. I mean, we have, we have scientists involved who have placed their reputations on the line that have taken great risk in coming onto the property and engaging with the team. And, you know, our, our team members from our superintendent, you know, Thomas Winterton to Jim Morse to, uh, you know, our security detail. I mean, I, all of these individuals are sacrificing a lot in order to, I think, be involved with the effort and and have really, I think, engaged on a level that most people wouldn't. And I think, out of respect for them, you know, we've we've wanted to make sure that nothing is disseminated prematurely or unprofessionally in a way that uh, that would undermine what we're doing. And I I hope that makes sense to everyone. I mean, we we had one individual in particular that had signed a confidentiality agreement and NDA, you know, I don't know, sometime in the past and uh, ended up breaching that ended up, you know, not only violating our trust, but going out and making all sorts of false claims and statements that, uh, that were really not only unkind and unprofessional, but uh, highly inappropriate. And, um, and it just, it, it uh, it's unfortunate when when one bad actor or one person can can really spoil the effort for everyone else involved. I mean, there's a there's a number of old sayings: you're only as strong as your weakest link, and you know one you know one bad apple ruins the whole bunch. Yada yada yada. But it, you know, I think I think m- making sure that we are maintaining a level of professionalism, integrity. And uh, and and discretion with the way that we are approaching these very serious topics is important. You've also talked a lot about safety with the staff there, with the crew there. You say there have been incidents there. How safe or how dangerous is the ranch, and what makes it dangerous? Well, when you have quite a number of participants that end up in the hospital in the last year alone relative to mysterious illness or injuries, it, it gives one pause. And it, it, it really calls for a more vigilant approach to health and safety. And that's something that we are trying to... Uh, to, to really, I think, um, keep in mind and improve with every step m- moving forward. I mean, again, I mentioned earlier, this is, this is a learning process for all of us. And, right. you know, it, it, you know, it's, you know, you learn through trial and error and, you know, we're, we're trying to learn from the, uh, from the past and, and to hopefully improve our protocols and that which we that's what which we try to do in order to protect those who are you know being involved with the effort and potentially putting themselves in harm's way are those injuries being caused by the phenomena that's there or just the dangers and rigors of working on a ranch <laughs> a 
choice A. It's uh, can you it's can you go deeper? It's it's not, yeah. It's it, you know the, the injuries, the illnesses. Um, <laughs> we believe, based on the uh, you know the review by medical professionals, uh, it, you know are very unusual and unexplained. I guess that's as far as you can take it because you can't risk giving up, you know, the security of everything. Well, well that, and yeah. that is private information of the individuals involved. True. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to, we do try to protect the, uh, the privacy of those involved. And, you know, there have been exceptions where, um, not that we've taken exception, but where uh, individuals like Thomas Winterton have elected um, and approved, you know, disclosure of kind of the nature of what they experienced and, and uh, you know, what they went through. And in those cases, we've been very forthright and very public in, in really presenting what has happened. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let me uh, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Dave. Yeah, I was going to jump to a science, but if you want to finish the thought, go ahead. No, I, I'm good. I, I got what I needed. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, great. So, uh, yes, my enthusiasm for asking science questions is is uh, obvious. Uh, so, Travis Taylor and others mentioned, of course, and I'm sure 95% of the interactions were on the cutting room floor about the unusual geological uh, structures that are in and around the Uinta Basin. And uh, so this, of course, begs the question for someone interested in the science. And I looked around at uh, uh, maps and other work that had been done in and around there, and it does seem that the geology of the Uinta Basin just doesn't quite fit. So can you, what can you tell us about the interaction with real, real. Good question. Um, you know, our, our principal investigator, Eric Bard, when, when first, you know, setting the stage for the observational science effort, uh, you know, thought that the, a likely explanation for a lot of what was being observed was the, the geology the unique geology, the area, seismic activity, you know, you know, phenomena, you know, such as earthquake lights and other luminous um, activity that, that has a, a more natural prosaic explanation could be behind this. And, and uh, you know, those were some of the, the things that we explored in those first months or years associated with our research at Skinwalker Ranch. Um, what was surprising was uh, the fact that our seismic um, uh, equipment and sensors out on the property, coupled with, you know, collaborating with others at the university, yielded insight that showed that the ranch uh, has experienced very little seismic activity. In fact, there has been absolutely zero seismic activity occurring on or around the ranch uh, in connection with any of the uh, strange phenomena that have that has been witnessed, uh, which is is to a degree it has ruled out, um, you know, some of the the more geological uh, explanations is 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 being valid. So, uh, it yeah, very interesting. I mean, the Uinta Basin is is truly a basin. Uh, it's, it's like a dish that has been formed and, you know, the Skinwalker Ranch is perhaps coincidentally, perhaps not right at the center, the epicenter of the Uinta Basin. And, you know, there may be something to its, its location and, you know, maybe that has allowed certain things to occur. I mean, maybe the, you know, maybe the veil is thinner. There as a result, you know, maybe there are wormholes or, you know, you know, portals to other dimensions um, that that are uh, possible 
due to the unique geology and the orientation of the ranch at the center of this very unique uh, basin. I, those are things that we continue to study and delve into, and I think you'll see uh, addressed in this next season and in future episodes, uh, hopefully as we continue to reveal what we're, what we're finding to the uh, public. Oh, that's great. Okay, so let's go along a little different line. Um, as I, uh, I talked to you earlier, uh, I'm sure that you have engaged not, not just once as seen in the show, but multiple times over the years with the peoples living in the area, including Native Americans. What can you tell us uh, uh, you've learned uh, from uh, the people living around Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, one thing we've learned is it isn't confined to the ranch. Even though the ranch seems to be a center of gravity and there is a higher frequency of events for whatever reason associated with this you know, roughly 500-acre piece of property, the uh, phenomena and a lot of the high strangeness actually carries over into other portions of the basin. Uh, and even, you know, we have a sister uh, ranch that is almost next door uh, that is within close proximity that has reported a lot of the same type of strange phenomena for decades. In fact, there are numerous uh, witness accounts uh, of activity that has been ongoing for a very, very long time. One thing that surprised me with our research, and I have to credit Jim Morse, who is kind of our community liaison, who has a special relationship with the tribal leaders and the, uh, the community. I mean, Jim has been able to help us, along with the, our anthropologist, Candace Lindy, to document, carefully document, uh, accounts that go back nearly 100 years relative to the property and the surrounding neighboring properties. And and, and really attests to the fact that everything from, you know, strange cattle mutilations to UFO sightings to, you know, some of the more um, disturbing spiritual phenomena, you know, it, it, it has not just been occurring since 1994 when the Sherman family acquired the property uh, from the previous owners. It goes back a very long time. In fact, I... I I have uh, marveled at the number of credible first-hand witness accounts that have come forward and, uh, and provided very credible testimony uh, regarding high strangeness, very disturbing events that have occurred on this property. I mean, we're talking former law enforcement, uh, you know, very credible business people. That, uh, that have had experiences going back decades, um, you know, most of which are, are random, unexpected, before the ranch really captured the attention of the public and, uh, and, and, and its notoriety. That's great. So, so uh, Dave? Yeah, Brandon, I've had a lot of people in the chat room ask tonight, about whether or not you have tested the ley lines in the area to see if they have any effect on what is happening with the phenomena there? Uh, that's in process, from what I understand right now. So the, the team is actually um, addressing that as part of the, uh, the, the current phase of the investigation. And I, I, I don't know that anything... Um, is is ready to be reported as of yet but i think you can expect to see special attention play, paid to uh some of those uh topics interesting and the other part is getting back to the whole phenomena aspect because bob brings the science i bring the woo here i mean that's that's literally how this works but but with with the name skinwalker ranch have there been encounters with actual skinwalkers at Skinwalker Ranch? Good question. I think the most notable encounter involved 
my caretaker, ranch manager, um, Jim Morse. Uh, Jim, uh, who uh, was patrolling the property one night with our security detail, happened upon uh, you know a what can only be described as kind of a a skinwalker type of entity that actually stared at him you know was was actually right up on the face of the mesa and ended up not only staring at him uh with these glowing eyes but according to jim morse you know turned around and ended up disappearing into the mesa itself and uh he was very shaken by the event uh, i remember when he reported uh his encounter to me uh he was he was very disturbed uh and i'd never heard him in the gosh in the almost 30 years of interaction with jim i'd never heard him really speak of you know anything like this happening to him in his life or really entertaining it and i think uh i think you know this has challenged his view of reality. I mean, when I, when I, when I first inspected the property, I flew out in uh, my helicopter with Jim uh, as is someone that I valued as a confidant and friend. And he, he was surprisingly unfamiliar with the history and the lore and was, was intrigued, but you know, wasn't really front loaded with any information and saw it with uh with virgin eyes, if you will, right along with, with me. And I think he, he shared the same healthy skepticism that I did uh, relative to a lot of the, the, the core claims and the history relative to the property. And so to hear his firsthand account, which he, he had, you know, witness with him that saw the same thing. Um, it, it, it causes me to, to at least, at least take a step back and, give some credibility to the accounts given by the native Americans in the area. I mean, this is a very real uh, part of their history, part of their culture. And to have the uh, tribal leaders instructing, you know, their people and, and especially their youth uh, to, to stay away from this property. And in, in many cases, don't even, you know, they, they tell them don't even look, toward Skinwalker Ranch because, uh, you know, it, it could end up, it could end up following them and they could be visited by, by this disturbing, uh, entity. Uh, but it's, you know, Skinwalker Ridge, which is really runs the, the expanse of the Mesa, which is part of the, you know, the curse, uh, supposedly that was placed on the property. Um, and part of that that history is something very real to those in the Uinta Basin and something that we have to take right. seriously. Right. Brandon, thank you so much. As we are going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour, Science Bob and Friends normally would end at this time, but because this is a special show... I know Science Bob is having fun. I know Mr. Brandon Fugel is having fun talking Skinwalker Ranch with all of you out there. So we're going to continue. We're going to skip the news, skip the thought of the day, continue with Brandon Fugel, owner of Skinwalker Ranch, and Science Bob McGuire on Science Bob and Friends here on Spaced Out Radio next. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. 
Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com.
We've rounded third. We're heading for home on Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Now, if you've missed most of this show or others, you can always check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. For the final time tonight, we introduce Science Bob McGuire, as every month we bring in Science Bob to break down the scientific side of the paranormal, and our special guest tonight, the owner of the Skinwalker Ranch, Brandon Fugel. Welcome, gentlemen, back to Spaced Out Radio. Happy to be here, Dave. Welcome. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. It's good to join you. Uh, let me jump into a question I'm sure many people have asked you, and let's just belabor it a little bit longer. Can you tell us if NIDS, Bigelow, any entity of the government or corporation uh, discussed with you previous work done on Skinwalker Ranch uh, prior to your acquiring it? Good question. I, you know, I had uh, some discussion with, with Mr. Bigelow, uh, with, uh, Colm Kelleher and others, you know, nothing really, I, I would say in depth, I wasn't really provided any, any documentation. In fact, my acquisition of the property was, uh, to be on an as is basis. And, you know, I, I respected that. I respected that, uh, you know, that Mr. Bigelow, uh, you know, wanted to, to keep a lot of their findings and that documentation um, really confidential and, and keep it close to the vest. And, and frankly, in, in opening a new chapter and wanting to have really a a fresh start and new perspective potentially regarding the ranch, I, I felt that uh, we were okay with that. I, I was equal to the task of, of, of really engaging with a clean slate um, you know, we, we have, we've had great relationships with, the, you know, members of the former NIDS and BASS program teams, and I have great respect for them, you know, great, great respect for those who've, you know, served on the property in the past and have, uh, have been very open and collaborative with, with anyone who was willing to engage. Uh, I, again, I feel like, you know, the best way for us to get to the bottom of the truth and to truly understand what is happening at Skinwalker Ranch is to to really, you know, bring in a multidisciplinary team of experts, but also, I think, uh, look to the history and and to those who've had experiences in the past and and really drawing from that data set and that wealth of knowledge in order to, I think, help shape um a lot of the experimental protocols and the research as we move forward. Okay. Thank you very much. I just knew that had to be addressed because some people are going to ask it. We might as well address it and get it out of the way. So uh, I thought uh, your statement about the first half hour of episode one of the show was kind of right on the money to the point that I want to ask as much as I can about the the glowing craft that flew along Skinwalker Ridge up on the mesa, I uh, I think the story goes it interacted with a body of water nearby, left, flew over the ridge, and went off uh, over the horizon. Uh, what can you tell us about that? And have there been any repeat incidents of that type? Um. You know, as far as as far as flying over a body of water, and you know the incident that you are relating, I'm I'm not sure exactly which which, which incident you're referring to exactly. I I know we we have had numerous um, incidents um, and accounts of UFO activity over the property that have been witnessed not only by myself but uh, members of the team that continue to defy ex- explanation. 
Um, some of that was captured on camera, um, you know, this past year and, uh, and, and presented on the, the television show. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it appears without really any warning and, uh, you know, as, as quickly as it appears, it can disappear. And, and I mentioned this earlier on the program, uh, you know, the phenomena is it's transient in nature. It's, uh, you know, it, it's completely unpredictable, which is quite vexing to, to those involved. Um, you know, everything from the, the RF anomalies, the electromagnetic anomalies that, uh, that take place to, to the visual sightings. I mean, they, you know, when you least expect it to occur, um, it happens to occur. So you, you, you know, you can never be really fully prepared. Okay. Let me ask the following question then. When you have visual uh, anomalies like UFOs or glowing objects, are they always or mostly accompanied by these RF and electromagnetic uh, 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 phenomena? Mostly. Okay. We, 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 when, when, we see, when we see, you know, unidentified aerial phenomena take place, it, in most cases it seems to be accompanied by, you know, electromagnetic um, anomalies. And, and, and we also see, you know, preceding and following events, you know, smartphones malfunctioning, you know, rapid battery depletion. I mean, we, we have, you know, so many different types of batteries that end up um, being completely drained. I mean, you saw that um, truthfully depicted and shown real time in the, the investigative series on the History Channel. I mean, that, that was not contrived. That was not fabricated. Every time people would come out, whether they're, whether they're ro- running a, a $30,000 drone platform or ground penetrating radar or whatever, you know, time after time, they were experiencing, you know, unexplained battery depletion or other equipment malfunction that frankly surprised them and defied explanation. All hey. right, Brandon. Brandon, I have a couple questions coming from our audience in our chat rooms here. And we're going to start off with Andrew, who's listening over this morning in the United Kingdom. And he is asking point blank, is there any truth to the rumor that the Vatican has been involved with anything to do with Skinwalker Ranch? No, not that I'm aware of. Not under my watch. Uh, I'm not aware of that. Good question. All right. All right. And Chris is asking if you had any prior knowledge about Bob Bigelow's program with the DIA involving OSAP. Oh, uh, no, not really. I, I, uh, I wasn't uh, given, you know, any of that documentation or, or really a, a briefing, um, on on a lot of that material and those events before acquiring the ranch, I I uh, it, a lot of my knowledge was limited to you know that which was you know already published in the public domain, frankly, and you know some of what was gleaned from uh, discussion with Dr. Kelleher and a few others, but uh, it, we we really tried to to embark on this phase of the investigation and this new era with, with a new set of eyes and with a clean slate. Considering that you have a few players who, who turned over from Mr. Bigelow when he owned the Skinwalker Ranch and they are now on your team, some of them even at times been at part or a part of the To the Stars Academy. Does Skinwalker Ranch have a role in today's ufology as we seem to be getting and edging closer and closer to some sort of formal disclosure about the UFO phenomena? Sure to the degree that it continues to be a center of gravity for unidentified aerial phenomena that has been both documented and witnessed, 
Um, and, you know, and we've been able to also document, um, you know, other events that seem to attend the UFO activity for whatever reason. So I, I, I think that it's, you know, I guess it's all a matter of opinion, but I would, you know, for some reason, this, this place seems to be a center of gravity for this type of unusual activity. Mm -hmm. Now, does that include the rumors that we have heard about portals opening up and craft actually coming out of them? You bet. You bet. There are numerous witness accounts of that occurring. And, you know, what we have visually seen on the property, even in broad daylight, speaks to the fact that either, you know, the, 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 the craft or the objects uh, viewed and recorded are either um, using a propulsion system or, you know, manipulating time and space in, in such a way as to, to, to come and go at, you know, it's at split second speeds and velocities, or, you know, they're, they're gaining entrance and access to the ranch via portals or wormholes that, uh, that would allow that type of transit to occur. All right. Some of the most interesting things you, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. No, no you go ahead. I'm, I'm good. Okay. So, so some of the most interesting things we saw uh, in the series were when your Travis and your team uh, did some experiments that seemed to pretty much triangulate a source of a lot of emissions at a particular point, and you flew rocket balloons and other things. Having Bob, oh, your Skype, your Skype, Do those Bob, kind of... Bob, your Skype was breaking up quite a bit there. Okay, do you hear me? Okay, now. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, go ahead, repeat that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, sorry about that. So, Travis and uh, your other team uh, ran a lot of experiments with rockets, balloons, etc. And do do those uh, to, to to triangulate the source the location of kind of a strong point for some of the phenomenon over the ranch. Do that. Does that continue? That's number one. And have you ever found the balloon that went missing? <laughs> Good question. Uh, first and foremost, the, the experiments are continuing. They are ongoing. In fact, we are trying to improve the equipment being utilized and our approach to to those experiments and others that are complementary uh, regarding the balloon experiment and the 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 particular weather balloon that had all of the instrumentation that disappeared uh, in fact it disappeared right when uh, there were um, strange what I believe to be strange or anomalous um, you know frequencies you know RF that were, it was being reported at that height above the ranch. Um, we have never recovered that balloon. We don't know where it went. It literally disappeared. Uh, and the, the, uh, the professor who came out that assisted with that exercise, uh, you know, continues to maintain he's never had that happen. I mean, he's flown weather balloons with instrumentation in all sorts of different environments all over the country. And uh, the only time that he's had this happen uh, is at Skinwalker Ranch. Explain that. Well, that's, that was one of the things that I was kind of saving for close to the end, because that to me was one of the most interesting portions of the entire show that and the, uh, really high, the extremely high, dangerously high level of microwave emissions. Right. And no, does it, that it continue? Really, yeah, it, it does. But it's, again, it's, it's transient. It's, it's not predictable. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, we, we've brought out experts that have sweeped the property that have surveyed the property for, you know, radiation and for other, um, for other harmful, um, you know, types of, uh, 
types of you know issues on the property and have come up zero. Uh, they've they've actually given the the property a clean bill of health. I mean, again, wh- one day we'll have someone come out or one hour and they'll they'll do a full survey of the area and they find nothing uh, concerning. And then the, seemingly the next moment or shortly later, you you know someone. Uh, sees a spike or something shows up on the instrumentation that simply shouldn't be there. Um, and, and I think, you know, it, it really begs the question. I mean, what, what would, what would be transient in nature? What, what could actually, you know, show up on one side of the ranch on one side of the 500 acres. And then, you know, on, on another side in a completely different area that would be exhibiting the same degree of extreme electromagnetic um, force or effect, and 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 why would this continue to attend? Um, you know some of the unexplained sightings and uh, and activity that we continue Dave? to monitor. Yes, we only got about four and a half minutes here left with you tonight, Brandon and Science Bob. I want to get this question in from our audience because a number of times throughout our chat room. The To the Stars Academy has come into play here. What is this, your involvement or your team's involvement with the To the Stars Academy, considering there is a little bit of overlap in the two staffs there? Yeah, you th- there's information? no involvement. No, no, I, I've had, I, it, there's really no involvement or, you know, no collaboration to date between you know, our you know, effort, our team and uh, the TTSA effort. I, I respect and admire, you know, what they are doing uh, and have been watching with great interest from afar. Um, and, you know, the, the one common denominator that we have is, you know, we've, we've had Dr. Hal put off as a, as a, as a trusted advisor in the past relative to the property. And that's pr- probably, the, that's the one common thread between the two organizations, but there really hasn't been any communication or collaboration whatsoever between the two. And um, I wish them the very best. I, Hey, a- any effort that, uh, that would advance, um, you know, research into these areas and elevate the, uh, the dialogue uh, is welcomed. And I, I have, again, I have great respect for, uh, for them and for others who are uh, who are engaged in trying to get to the bottom of what is really happening. Okay, let's let's ask a question about the show. It, it, you've already indicated that you're doing ongoing experiments and that the the show is being uh, videoed. And as as you've already mentioned, a lot of the things that happened are transient. Uh, kind of how much of the next season's in the can? Uh, you know. We've, we've been, uh, the team has been out there mobilized for several months uh, of pretty continuous filming. Uh, Dr. Taylor actually has been stationed on site, has his own trailer on site there within steps of the command center and has been engaged with the team. I mean, you know, Eric Bard, our principal investigator, uh, you know, lives there at the command center with uh, Dragon you know, Brian Arnold, who, you know, I've known since, uh, since we were 19 years old and I have a long, you know, trusted relationship with, and, you know, the others between Thomas Winterton and Jim Morse are constantly interacting with the team and, you know, you know, dedicating their time and energies and focus to this effort. Um, you know, we have 10 episodes that are, that are really going to be, um, presented, in season two and i think the the public is going to be very surprised at what will be not only revealed but i think the level of professionalism the caliber of the um science and the investigation as we we have uh we've really been moving forward um we we do listen to the criticism to suggestions and we have tried to incorporate a lot of that into um I think, you know, better approaches to the the challenges that we have with uh, with really investigating 
the phenomena. That's, that's terrific. Before before we go, Brandon, we got about one minute left. Uh, we have a terrific bunch of followers on Twitter and Facebook for Spaced Out Radio, and many of the questions, as you know, came from them, and also many of the members of the Richard Dolan Forum wrote questions, uh, and we, we want to thank them for uh, uh, giving us these great questions and interacting and arguing with us about what should be asked, and thank you so much for this engagement. Oh, it's been awesome. I appreciate uh, appreciate your interest and support of our effort, and uh, we look forward to uh, to sharing what we learn with all of you. And uh, uh, we're we're uh, humbled and and honored to be a part of this community, and and hopefully uh, a part of of the the science of discovery. And that's the main thing, right there, the science of discovery brandon fugel skinwalker ranch owner i want to say on behalf of all of our spaced out radio listeners it is an absolute pleasure to to have you on this show i hope we did enough to earn your trust and respect for you to return one day soon hey you bet look looking forward to staying in touch and appreciate um the time and uh again it gets wonderful to have uh such not only spirited discussion, but I think uh, professional engagement uh, focused Thank on you. these topics. I think it's about time. Think about Thank it's you. about time this comes out of the shadows. This is not a fringe topic. This is something that should be top of mind for everyone. This is this is the greatest science project of our time. Thank you so much. Science Bob and Friends wraps up. We'll talk to Science Bob the second Wednesday of next month. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us out and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your evening with us, because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night. But tomorrow, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we got room for them too. Good night.